Good morning and welcome into another edition of Mic'd Up here on Pittsburgh Sports Live and throughout the Pittsburgh Sports Now family of networks. And this is a morning after some major news around the Pittsburgh sports scene, major news around the Pittsburgh Steelers, and maybe the most polarizing topic in Pittsburgh sports today. Of course, this is a show after Mike Tomlin receives a three-year extension on his contract to continue being the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers until 2024. We're going to touch on that and then maybe even some major news around Pitt basketball and some breaking news there for Pittsburgh Sports Now. I'm your host, as always, Mike Oste, and I am joined by Mike Bakobakan. Mike'd Up is presented by Martin Lawn Services, and you can contact Martin Lawn Services at 412-849-5894. And Mike, <laughs> I just sent you a simple text. I think we know what we're talking about for this yeah. one. We didn't even have to really uh, mm -hmm. confer. It was pretty, pretty obvious. I've actually already touched on it on a mic drop show that's on Pittsburgh Sports Live and also Steelers Now. Al and I both have appeared on multiple shows throughout, throughout the region here uh, in the Pittsburgh Sports region. And we have tons of coverage, of course, on Steelers Now. And my microphone's getting excited as it almost fell over <laughs> on me here as this topic is so hot around the scene so number one were you surprised because it kind of did catch most of us I feel like off guard and then number two why do you think the Steelers made this decision to extend Tom and offer him the three more years it's more money it really looks like a reward and brings him to 2024 as Steelers head coach and then we'll certainly get into everything else and the perception of that here as we go well, I, I think number one, it's a sign of stability um, right. for not only the fan base, but for everyone around that. I don't think the Steelers are going to admit that they might struggle this season or might not be what they're accustomed to being. But if that does happen, uh, if that would have happened this year, you knew the call, you know, the calls would have been uh and the tweets and everyone else <laughs> right. move on from Tomlin time to get rid of him get well those existed this past season and in, right. in the off season and year before and seemingly all the time <laughs> so I think I think the Rooney's just kind of cut that off at the knees and said regardless of what happens this season uh, Mike Tomlin's our guy going forward right uh, we're going to get a new quarterback he had his chance to work with a hall of famer and Ben Roethlisberger and now we're going to give him that next opportunity whoever is the next Steelers uh, quarterback of the future, Mike Tomlin will be uh, directing him as well. This is such a fascinating topic, Mike, because. Right. Um, it really is. We could do an hour show on yeah, this. Yeah. I see both sides of the argument with it. And uh, if you're on Twitter today, depending on what uh, media person you follow, you could right. be hearing that Mike Tomlin's an underachiever. And also you're hearing that we take him for granted. And I agree with both of those sentiments. Honestly, again, this might, might be boring here for a talk show and debate show. I can understand both sides of this as well. Now, I do also want to make this clear because I did a show a few months back that maybe it was time to finally part ways with the Tomlin era. And prior to that, I always had been somebody that felt – he wasn't appreciated enough by Pittsburgh sports fans. I did feel that maybe it was knee jerk. Cause certainly after Ben being hurt and you have Mason and duck. And honestly, I, I said this on so many shows and actually our Corey Geiger told me it's the funniest thing he heard when anyone appearing, but I literally, it's literally true. And I told him that the Pittsburgh Steelers almost made the playoffs with a GQ model and a guy named duck at quarterback. And it's just the case. And again, that has to go credit to Mike Tomlin in a way two years ago. And if it had the current format, they actually would have gone in. And that was when Ben was hurt. Last year, they started 11-0. They win the division. And I think people forget as poor as the year ended and how it's not rated a good year because of the embarrassing postseason loss. And it was an embarrassing postseason loss to the Browns. They weren't supposed to start 11-0 and win the division before the year. People weren't predicting that before the year. So that's still a win. So I've defended Tomlin for the most part of not being appreciated enough and feeling like he is a Hall of Fame head coach. If Bill Cowher got in, you look at the resume, Tomlin's getting in. Tomlin's oh, yeah. going to be in Canton someday. It's just a fact he's going to be there. Tony Dungy's resume is the same as his, if not worse. 
Tomlin's going to get there someday. So I've always defended Tomlin in that respect, but I've moved off of it a little bit just because eventually you do have to, uh, you know, eventually you do have to move on from the era. Eventually there does have to be some culpability to what the other side is saying of only three playoff wins in the last 10 years. And if you look at two of the three playoff wins, they're not even that impressive. So you got to eventually take some blame for that. But if you're going to bring back Ben for one more year, I was okay with bringing back Tomlin for one more year. I don't know if I love the extension just because it's not, it's three more years on top of that. I wouldn't have minded, let him sweat a little bit and let go through one more year. But to what you're saying, and I do get why this was done. If you know, you're going to lose Ben and you probably think in the back of your mind, I just went through this. There's been speculation I personally actually have been told by somebody very close to Kevin Colbert that he was going to finish his career as Steelers GM a year ago. So he's already on borrowed time for what his close family feels. Uh, If you feel like Colbert might be gone soon and Ben certainly gone soon, you want stability. The Steelers have always had stability. They've hired three coaches. They fired nobody. All three of them are going to the Hall of Fame. They've had the same family own them for decade upon decade upon decade. And they may have said to themselves, if we can't have two of the three, we got to at least have one. So we, now we know we can have stability with Tomlin. Let him try it for another era. The problem here, Mike, is, and I do want to ask you now on how you think he'll be perceived legacy-wise by Steeler fans and media when he ever is done. Because it's polarizing now. It's split now. We get both sides. But many of our colleagues seemingly have one side and they're stuck there. If Tomlin does not win another playoff game, by 2024, he's won three in the last 10. If he finishes with no more playoff victories as Steelers head coach, despite the 145 wins, the 650 win percentage, the Super Bowl, the two appearances, all the, the fact that he's never had a losing record, all those postseason appearances, if he doesn't win another playoff game, which is possible with Ben finishing up and then having a new rebuilding era, how will he be perceived? And then if he does manage to turn it around, do you think he'll garner some support from some people who are currently criticizing him? Well, I I don't think no matter what he does, he's going to have criticism because, and I, and I understand this already. There's so many arguments to this and they're true. They had a hall of fame quarterback in the prime of his career. And while they had tremendous regular season success and the fact that, uh, Mike Tomlin of every coach in NFL history has the first most wins after 14 seasons. Yeah. A 650 one, win percentage is ridiculous. He's number one. Don Shaw was number two. So you can't argue with that. Right. But then the, but then the part is they didn't finish the job. And I guess you could look at every different loss and, you know, figure things out. But I, I think he's always yeah. going to be looked at. The Jacksonville someone, playoff loss that I was in the press box for is And awful. he had some good teams, and he right. had a Hall of Fame quarterback, and they probably should have done more. However, I, I just think it's hard to win, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to win in the NFL. The way the system is set up. Uh, it, Mike, it, it, think it, about this. You mentioned Don Shula, who had, yeah. who had the wins record, who had the, the wins record for the first 10 years, had all of these records before Belichick and still has some. He has two Super Bowl rings. He only has two. He lost a few others, and he also underachieved several years. That's only one more than Tomlin. That's outstanding. I'm not saying Don Shula is not a legend, but think of Don Shula, who everybody agrees is god of coaching prior to Belichick, only won two championships. That's crazy to think about to criticize a guy who only won one. I mean, winning a title is hard. There have been Hall of Famers in their sport who have stack wins, who are deserving of the Hall of Fame, who don't have any championships. Tomlin does have one. It's better to have one than not have one. All I know is that every year he's been here, this team has expectations. Uh, it's a fun th- season for the most part through December. <laughs> they're, al- they're, al- they're always looking into the playoffs right. uh, seemingly every season. Sure. Every NFL fan base doesn't have that. And I'm never going to criticize Mike Tomlin for that. And he's a winner uh, in my eyes. Um, He's done a great job here, uh, a very good job here. I'm not going to say great. I'm going to change that. He's done a very, very good job here. Great is winning a couple more playoff games and maybe getting into the Super Bowl. So I think the term great is used too much. 
I wouldn't even think, and I think the Rooney's are very smart with this. When you have the stability with a guy like that, players love him. I think he's a good evaluator of talent. I think maybe his game management sometimes, maybe he's going to improve on that. That isn't always the best. Right. But I wouldn't trade Mike Tomlin for very many other coaches in the NFL if you had it, if you put it this way. And I think he deserves the chance. He inherited a team with a lot of veterans. He brought a lot of those guys in. Him and Colbert were a good team together. I think he deserves that chance now that this team is aging and they need to build it back up. Right. He wants to be here. I think he deserves the opportunity to take on the second rebuild. Yeah, if he wants to be here, I do think he deserves that opportunity. I do think he's earned that. Number two, the Steelers just do not fire head coaches. They mm -hmm. love stability. They just don't do it. So the thing also is I think fans don't understand. If Tomlin and the Steelers were going to part ways, it was going to happen a couple ways, and it wasn't going to be him fire getting fired. It would have been him choosing to leave and maybe go take another job. There were rumors a couple years ago of the Washington football team because of his son being down there and the yeah. connection there and that being an historic franchise as well. They went with Rivera. Tomlin nixed it right away, didn't want to go there. He stayed around. Tomlin would be making the decision one way. The other way would have been just a contract running out, and that being it, they wouldn't be firing anybody. That's what I maybe am surprised by, that they didn't at least let the contract go. Not to say they wouldn't then resign him, but I could have seen let the contract go, then resign him, or offer a two-year extension because his recent deals have been one year with an option. So a two-year extension would still be improvement on the deal. We still would be talking about this in a polarizing aspect. Three years is the biggest extension he's had since winning a Super Bowl, which was over a decade ago. So, again, Tomlin's a Hall of Famer. Steelers probably wouldn't do better than him. Granted, when they hired Tomlin, Cower, and Chuck Knoll, they didn't have resumes prior to being hired, so maybe they could have found some of the diamond in the rough. But having stability is very, very important. You look at all the other successful franchises throughout sports history, no one, no other franchise, and I mean this literally, has the stability – of the Pittsburgh Steelers, three head coaches in 50 years <laughs> and all of them going to the hall of fame and all winning titles. Imagine the pressure on the next guy. If you don't win a title, you're nothing basically as a Steelers head coach since the merger really. So I get it. I think what makes Steeler fans upset because they look at it more than just Pittsburgh because NFL fans are usually fans of the league, not just a team like maybe other sports. And they see, Mike McCarthy, one ring, a historic franchise, there a decade, playoff appearances, Hall of Fame QB, underachieved a couple years, fired. They see Tony Dungy, who was Tomlin's mentor, division titles, get him close, best ever for them, Hall of Fame defensive players, fired. It took them firing him to win that title. He'd have to get it elsewhere. Andy Reid with the recent championship with the Chiefs and building that dynasty now. Three Super Bowl appearances and one ring, but he has one appearance with the Eagles, in multiple a NFC title games, they eventually had to let him go. He had to win the ring elsewhere. There are examples of other franchises that normally like stability that after a decade or so said to their guy, you got close or you did win and then you didn't win enough and we're letting you go and eventually had to move on. Usually all things eventually teams move on at some point. But the Steelers want stability. If they can't get it with Colbert and Ben, they want it with Tomlin and they're not going to go knee-jerk. They did win a division title. So people are acting like this team just won three games. They did win a division title. They were 11-0 at one point. Yes, they have the bad playoff loss, but I think how he coached them last year and the year before without Ben probably impressed the Rooney family more than didn't, and that, that earned this extension. It is, it is in contrast to how we're used to coaches being handled in the last 20, 30 years. That's, that's what the, I think it is, Mike. Examples I, think I, I named. Yeah. I, th I think you hit the nail on the head right there is that everywhere around the country in every sport, it's just the norm everywhere else. That, that, that any sign of uh, leaking oil, fire the coach, yeah. the, the NHL is, uh, you know, that that's the best example of that. Those, those guys can't, uh, you know, they should never, the NHL coaches should never <laughs> buy a house because they're going to be right. gone in two years. I don't care. Right. Mike Sullivan's on borrowed time here. It's only a matter of time. Before. Yeah, that's two rings. And somebody yeah. actually compared Tomlin to Bowsma when I was doing my chat for mic drop. And I said to myself, I get it, the one ring, but Tomlin was there much longer. But the NHL shelf life is so much shorter. 
Bilesma's not going to the Hall of Fame. And, and yeah, they switch it around constantly. Oh, even look, Joe Torre got fired from the Yankees at one point. That's outstandingly crazy. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, the thing that I yeah. liked about this is that I, I, think, I just think the Rooney's just made a sign to everyone, including Mike Tomlin. And they're telling, they're telling the fan base, they're right. telling the media, they're telling the uh, national media, and they're telling Mike Tomlin himself that if you have any internal uh, thoughts that, okay, you know, maybe we might, you're okay. You're our guy. Right. Regardless of what happens, right. you're coming back. And uh, that topic could be put to bed. It's not going to, ha- you know, we're not giving you a You hope so. Deal, people are so still going to say fire Tomlin every day. But yeah. yeah, so that people like us can talk about it. You know, right. see on the hot seat, the, 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 the Rooney's. Uh, put water on that fire and said, right. "Done." Mike Tomlin's going to be our coach, and I think that's a, uh, I think it's a great, uh, it's a great thing, and it's a great sign to uh, everyone in that organization. Absolutely. Although I will answer the question that I asked earlier: if he does not win another playoff game, and by the way, the reason why I asked it, you're looking at Ben leaving after a year, looking for a new quarterback. Maybe Juju's then gone. There's certainly other positions that are in flux. We might see Cam Hayward leave before Tomlin does at one point or another. It's not a guarantee he does win another playoff game. He might not not win another playoff game. And if that doesn't occur, he's always going to have that polarizing effect. The one thing that – and, Mike, you know this very well, too. Here's the difference of Mike Tomlin and Bill Cowher and why they're perceived so differently. Because their resumes are very, very, very similar. Tomlin had his success with one Super Bowl championship, two appearances, three AFC title game appearances, division titles, 145 wins. Most of those, certainly in the playoffs, he's 8-8 eight and eight in the postseason. Most of those playoff wins, in fact, five of them, came early in his tenure. Bill Cowher took a little bit to get going. Yes, they did appear in the Super Bowl 30 and 90, after the 95 season. He had some playoff disappointments, but then had some losing seasons, so had a lull there, and then was fighting for that elusive ring. So everyone's rooting for the guy, finally get, get, get the big one. That's why he's loved. He finished his career on a high note, even though he had that bad year after, but it was a, a building up to finally win that championship after those losing seasons. Tomlin had so much success early, not that you don't want it, but it's almost a negative in sports. This even goes to players. If they win a championship in their second year but don't win again for 15 years, people are saying, did you really win a ring when it was early? Yeah, it counts. They're going to wear the ring later. It's not like it didn't occur. Uh, Same thing with coaches. It's better to win it early than not at all. And I think Tomlin had so much success early that it makes people either feel that that's the benchmark for him or you're seeing less success later. So it's just – what have you done for me lately? And what has Tomlin done for you lately is only three playoff wins in the last 10 years. What did Cower did for you lately is winning a Super Bowl in in a championship game appearance in two of his last three seasons. That might be how people are opining for Cower still, but I think people forget Chuck Noll only won a couple playoff games his last decade too, and they let him linger. So to be fair, it's the same situation. It's a different era. It's unlike other teams. That's why people are, are freaking out. But I think the Rooney family has made it clear that if Cower was coaching today, they probably would still keep him too. They want stability. They are loyal. It, it, it's maybe to a fault at some times, but I think it's also good uh, for the franchise overall, and it's been good to this point. So it's always going to be polarizing. People are always going to want Tomlin fired. It's never going to happen. It did surprise me it occurred with that extension, but there will be stability as the head coach. Last thing I will say on this, Mike, is I'm surprised Mike Tomlin – Maybe not surprised, but if I were Mike Tomlin, I would think twice about wanting the extension. Here's why. There's no way for Tomlin to improve his legacy with the Steelers unless he wins another title. That is very unlikely to occur in the next few years because they're kind of having to rebuild this thing up. He's already a Hall of Famer. He's already Ring of Honor. Every award imaginable for the Steelers he's going to get. There's no way to take that away, but it's hard to improve the legacy. If I were him... I maybe wouldn't be against having a new challenge or going somewhere else. And if I go somewhere else and lose for a year or two, no one's going to be mad because I'm building it up again and I'm not going to be dealing with this polarizing effect. If I were Tomlin, I maybe wouldn't want to keep on dealing with this and would maybe go try my hat elsewhere because any team with an opening, if Tomlin was available, would would love him, would immediately hire him right away. He's still under 50 at 49 years old and players love him. So 
Yeah. I'm surprised Tomlin is that excited to stay knowing the situation and knowing his legacy basically cannot be improved, really. Well, I don't know that it can't be improved. I, th- I think he could cr- uh, build upon it. Um, talking about building it up, going to another team, he has a chance to build it up here. Yeah, true. And, true. and, and, and it's all going to hinge upon one thing. You talked about the end of the Cowher era, why he was successful in the beginning of the Tomlin era. Well, the, the, the common denominator was a quarterback. Yeah, Howard didn't get bent too late, right. Chuck Noll yeah. didn't have that at the end of his career. Right. He had, you know, he had garbage. And that right. that's what, you know, that's what he had. Uh, and, and that, that it, it's a quarterback league. Sure. And his, why I think this is an attractive uh, position to Mike Tomlin is that he knows now that him and Colbert are in a position now to acquire that quarterback. Because he goes to another pr- uh, organization um, you know, you there's no know. guaranteed, obviously right. any organization that's going to want him for, for that has an opening is a team that's struggling and probably doesn't have a quarterback. So uh, that, that, that's what it's all about. And he's going to have a chance right. in the next year or two to right. get his guy a quarterback. He inherited Ben, which was a good thing. Now he's going to get a chance to get his guy at quarterback and we'll see what he does. This is a challenge for him. He gets to Turkey. build this, Build the Steelers' legacy up. What 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 can he he can go down to a, as a bigger hero if he's able to? Let, everyone thinks that this organization is struggling right now or on its way down. Tomlin puts together a couple of good drafts with Colbert here, and they go back up. He's back on top again with the uh, you know with the Pittsburgh Steelers and a good young quarterback. So I think this is a great challenge for him, and uh, you know obviously he's looking forward to it. It's a challenge, to say the least, and hopefully people, and they probably won't, of course, have the right perception and right right expectations that it, you know, you keep banging the drum or people keep bringing, banging the drum about not having won that second championship. It's going to be hard to do so because after Ben, and maybe next year they can contend, but after that you're going to need to look for that quarterback. All of this points to can they find that next quarterback because that is the defense of Cower yeah. for the one ring. That is the defense of Chuck Noll at the end. They didn't have their quarterback. Once Cower got his guy, he won. Tomlin has had the luxury, unlike most legendary coaches, with the exception of Belichick, who, of course, won the most, of having a Hall of Fame quarterback from Jump Street, from right away. So he didn't have him two years ago, and they almost made the playoffs. But we'll see what happens with the new quarterback in that situation. It'll be a challenge, to say the least. This topic will never die. People are still going to want him fired. That's never going to happen. Tomlin's going to be around. For, for, for good, bad, or ugly, Tomlin's going to be around with the Steelers to at least 2024. And I wouldn't be shocked, Mike, that if he does what you're saying and, and improves his legacy, he stays around even longer than that. Because, again, mm-hmm. he'll only be 52 years old at that one point. He is not an old man. No. And clearly he has the hunger for this. I thought maybe he'd be burned out too, but that's not the case. mike up here on Pittsburgh Sports Live, presented by Martin Lawn Services, Mike Pakovic and Mike Osti. God, we had to get all that out about Tomlin, to say the very, very least. And it's all over again, Steelers Now, Pittsburgh Sports Live, my show. Go to the mic drop section in the playlist and here. But, Mike, before we close things up, some breaking news of sorts over there on Pittsburgh Sports Now. Pitt recruiting on the basketball side now maybe has some positive news in terms of landing somebody, as that's been the topic all offseason, losing so many. How are you going to replace it? Jeff Capel having to go to work. He went to work. Yeah, as many people thought, including myself, was with the uh, continuous story of the transfer portal. That's what how Pitt was going to acquire talent. Uh, I, th- I still think we t- uh, one of our last shows we talked about the uh, five star center Efton Reed. He delayed that decision, but I still think in a, Pitt's in a really good position right. to land him. But it, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> they've landed uh, two recruits in the last uh, transfers in the last two days. Uh, forward from uh, Oakland University, while they might sound, you know, that impressive, right. I, I don't think you you can look at that. He he fits a role that they need, uh, a banger down low that could rebound, tough player. He averaged, uh, he was one of the uh, top 10 players in the country as far as averaging double-doubles. His name's Daniel Oladapo. And last night, they picked up a guard from Texas Tech, uh, Jamarius Burton. And he's going to fill a need that they have as uh, they need a depth at point guard. They needed a veteran guy. He's going to back up Femi Odakali. 
but also uh, from what I understand, he's going to, they're going to match those two together and they're going to have two guys in the back court that are, they're going to have a six, five point guard along with a six, five, uh, two guard. So, and, and I think uh, Capel likes that as far as uh, the physicality that those two are going to be able to bring and the toughness. Uh, this kid uh, was described to me as a big, wide shouldered, mean guy that wants to win. Right. And uh, he didn't, he went to Texas Tech from Wichita State, where he, at Wichita State, he averaged double digit points. And last year with Texas Tech, he just wasn't able to find a role in their rotation. And, uh, you know, I know the first thing Pitt fans are going to say is, you know, look at his numbers last year. They weren't impressive. It was just, it was a bad fit for him down there. He didn't, uh, he didn't fit into their offensive system. And, you know, that's why he's moving on. I, I think they should just don't look at that. Uh, don't look at his numbers. I think he's a good, uh, I think he will be a good fit for this, uh, for this rotation. And now that they got a guard, uh, Capel's next to acquisitions. Uh, he needs to get size. They have no centers, and he needs to find a way to uh, pull in uh, some length in the front court, and that would start with uh, Efton Reed whenever he makes his decision. And obviously that would be big for Pitt, to say the very, very least. And size kind of has been the problem the last couple of years, maybe yeah. rebounding-wise, even Champagny. He wouldn't be able to put those boards together and those rebounding in the NBA. Having a, a player that has size that could transition and kind of bang with anybody, that would be big for the program. That's not happened yet. But Capel doing work. Capel's always been a recruiter. The win-loss record's not what some Pitt fans want, but again, he's always been a recruiter. Everyone already always knew or should know, based on paying attention, he was going to retool. And I think you, you hit the nail on the head in terms of looking at the stats, especially in college sports more than anything else. You really cannot look at the stats from one program to another if mm -hmm. players have played at both for grad transfers or players transferring or whatever the case may be, because the systems are all different. The coaching styles are all different. And you're looking at 19-year-old kids, how somebody talks to them, a coaching style, a system could really impact how they play and how they fit in. So just because somebody couldn't get it done one place, you don't know that's going to be the right. case the next place. And one style is totally different than the other. Maybe he's a better fit with Pitt than he was at Texas Tech. Interesting, too, leaving the Big 12. So that is, that is interesting. Actually, the Big 12 has lost a decent amount of players, which is odd normally for a conference that was the best in the country and had the national champion with so many tournament teams. But I guess nothing is odd this year because everyone was transferring out. So it's just part of the norm. Uh, that'll be it for this show. And uh, again, all of our coverage is over there at Steelers Now and Pittsburgh Sports Live for all the Tomlin news as it was a Tomlin day on the site, but it really had to be. And also Pittsburgh Sports Now for the continuation of Pitt recruiting there. Where are we eight days away from the draft? What are we, we are, yeah, so next, so it's the 29th. Thursday. So it's Thursday night eight and there'll be days. a live show here on, on, yeah. on PSL. Um, you can, you, yeah, you can actually join some, some of that if you'd like. I know you weren't yeah, on the last I can't year. wait. That's, uh, that, that's going to be big, and I can't wait. Um, really, this may be before, uh, more so than any other draft. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this one because this, this is going to be so, so big for, uh, for the Steelers in the next couple, for not only this year, but the future. I will say this. This is the biggest draft and the most important draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers franchise since probably the draft that eventually led to Ben Roethlisberger right on the heels of Cower getting close but looking for that one ring. Obviously, that was a big draft. Paul Amalu around that time, that was big. It led to Super Bowl Forty. This probably is the most important and biggest draft since then. And this draft this year, 2021, is a more important draft than next year. They yeah. cannot – if they lose this draft and don't get anything in terms of replacing for the future, next year will be catastrophic because they yeah. won't have enough picks to fix everything. They need to get some work done this year, immature to quarterback, but that certainly is a major factor as well. Mike up here, presented by Martin Lawn Services, 412-849-5894. That's all for this one. We could honestly go on – all day on, on Tomlin if we wanted to. Maybe we'll do future shows because who knows when the crazy news will drop and it'll never not be a polarizing topic. For Mike Pakova, Ken, I'm Mike Osti. For all of us here throughout the now family of networks and, of course, Pittsburgh Sports Live, subscribe. That's it for this one. Have a good day and uh, 
enjoy your your commenting and takes that I'm sure you're leaving all over every every social media outlet, including you, whoever you are that is leaving fire Tom on every single Facebook post that Steel is now. Because that is somebody. So good morning to you as well.